What's better than a Movo VXR10? Two Movo VXR10s. Hello YouTube, my name is Matt Spa and I am a photographer, videographer, and a man who can appreciate a little time spent in the shed. I recently did an unboxing and review video of the Movo VXR10. If you didn't see it, you can catch it here. The response that I got to that video, plus a nice email from Movo saying how much they liked it, got me thinking about other ways that I could use this little microphone. So in today's video, I'm going to try to take a pair of them and create a stereo configuration that you can use on your DSLR. Before we get into this build, it's important to talk just for a minute about microphone polar patterns. And polar patterns are just the area in which a microphone picks up the majority of its sound. The Movo VXR10 is a cardioid microphone. Cardioid refers to the area in which this microphone picks up frequencies. So it picks up frequencies in what looks like an upside down heart shape. This makes it ideal for our use today because it's gonna pick up a lot of sound in front and sound to the side, but reject sound from the rear. So as we have two of these and our object transitions from the left side of the frame to the right side of the frame, we're gonna get a very smooth transition of sound. Other common patterns are the hypercardioid, which is smaller here and has a good size lobe at the back. The super cardioid, which has an even smaller lobe at the front and a smaller lobe at the back. And lastly, uh, the omnidirectional, which picks up sound pretty evenly from all sides of the capsule. If you want a better understanding of microphone polar patterns, uh, the Shure Microphone Company put out a video years ago that shows all different mics. They use a sound source and they rotate the microphone around so you can really get an idea of how different frequencies are hitting the mic. I highly recommend it if you want to have a better understanding of this and know how to choose microphones for certain applications. Today we're going to use our two cardioid mics and we're going to set them up in what's called an XY configuration. The beauty of the XY configuration is kind of twofold. One, it's very compact. So it's great for drum overheads, great for just picking up ambient sound. But two, it solves the problem of phase issues. A ridiculously oversimplified description of phase problems would be, if I have a sound that hits two microphones at different times, but they're playing back to me at the same time, there's a possibility for frequencies from each microphone to start to cancel each other out. You'd call those phase problems. The XY configuration solves this by putting an X and a Y microphone. So one's on the X axis, the other's on the Y axis, and the capsules are aligned in the Z axis. So they're almost right on top of each other. So any sounds that are coming at your microphone array are hitting both capsules at basically the exact same time. So it saves you those kinds of problems. For DSLR purposes or run and gun video or even using your smartphone, obviously it makes for a very compact uh, configuration. So that's what we're going to build. Here I've assembled everything that we need for this build. We need a pair of VXR10 microphones. We need a cold shoe extension bar. This is the Movo VB04. It's a four inch long bar. It has a cold shoe mount on the bottom and then the bar serves as a receiver for other cold shoe mount items. So we'll put both of these microphones onto this bar. We need a file, some 150 grit sandpaper, and a utility knife. One of these bases needs to be modified so that it will go in the bar at 45 degrees instead of 90 degrees. We're going to use all of this to knock the corners off so that we can slide it in there at exactly 45 degrees. We need a Phillips head screwdriver, a number two millimeter Allen wrench, a pair of nylon bushings, a pair of small washers, an M3 30 millimeter screw, some super glue, and lastly, this cable that will allow us to sum our left and right microphones into one stereo input that we can feed into an audio recorder or in my case, my mirrorless camera. That's everything you need. Let's get started. Step number one in this build or any build is to consider your personal safety. If you're not comfortable using the tools and techniques that I'm going to use here, either find someone to help you, 
get somebody to do it for you or maybe pass on this build. Your safety is your personal responsibility, not mine. As I tell my kids every time I leave the house, don't do dumb things. With that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is modify one of these shock mounts so that instead of sliding in here at 90 degrees, it will slide in at 45 degrees. And the way I'm gonna do that is just by removing two of these corners. I've actually already done it on this one and you can see the difference. So this was a square plate to start off with just like that. And all I've done is using this as my measurement guide, taken and scored across the plastic at that width, then used a file to file those corners off and the sandpaper to go back in there and just clean up those edges so that it'll slide in smoothly. And you'll see now, if I push this in here, it does indeed slide in and hold our microphone at 45 degrees to the bar. So that's all you have to do for microphone mount number one. For number two, we need to gain some height in here. And what we're trying to do is get this microphone to be that width higher. It'll all make sense in a minute. Using the number two Allen wrench, I'm going to loosen the screw here in the center and just unscrew this. You'll know when you see, note when you see in here, there's a couple of um, receivers for these little tabs. These tabs keep this thing from spinning. So if you didn't want to go to the trouble of taking these corners off, you could loosen this screw, take this off, file those two tabs off, and this will spin freely until you screw it back down with the screw. So that might be a simpler option for some people. I liked this because it just seemed a little bit more solid. The next thing we need to do is, using the super glue and the nylon shims or uh, bushings, we're gonna just glue these two things together. This stuff is nasty. It gets all over your hands. I only get one shot at this. It doesn't take much. I'm just putting one little bead of glue around there. And then as I put this in, I'm going to rotate it to kind of suck that in there. I'm moving it back and forth just a little bit. The only real trick is to get them flush at the end and try to not glue your fingers to it. I got the glue on my finger. Acetone will get that off. It's nasty stuff. You might be better just waiting for it to wear off. So with that done, the next thing that we need to do is the only kind of fiddly part of this whole thing. We need to take this 30 millimeter screw and push it through that hole, but it doesn't want to go because this is in the way. So you just kind of have to bend it around. You don't want to manhandle it too much. Using the screwdriver, once you get it to a certain point, actually can help. There we go. And once you've cleared the bottom of this clip, all is fine, and it's not a problem. So now we've got the screw inside. We're gonna use this to feed down through our bushings. Like I said, I had to use a pair of washers to get just that extra little bit of height that I needed. And I'm gonna screw this in. <laughs> sure I am. So, let's see here. Here we go, it went. So now I'm just using my Phillips head screwdriver. This is not how I would do this if I wasn't trying to film myself doing it. And I like to align those a little bit. So there you go. Now we have this raised up. You'll note that the nylon washers that I've spec below actually will fit inside those little tabs. So there's no other physical changes made to this. So we're ready for some assembly. And we're gonna take this, slide it into here and lock it down. We're gonna take this slide it into here and lock it down. We obviously still have some adjustment here, but that's our finished product. Um, 
both mounts set inside. We're going to adjust that angle a little bit and then give this a final tightening. Both microphones can pop into the mounts. And what you'll see is that we have our X and Y axis. On the Z axis, we have a little bit of a gap in between. That's what I had to use those washers for. You don't want these touching and banging into each other. That's not cool. So you may have to put an additional washer in. You might have to adjust the height of this a little bit, depending on just the manufacturer of your piece. But that's it. That's our stereo XY configuration. And I don't think it could be any simpler, but it probably could. The last thing we need to do is connect our mics to the camera. We're going to use the cables that come with the Movo mics. These are the tip ring sleeve cables. And it's important to get them plugged into the correct side of our adapter that's going into the camera. The microphone that's on the right hand side is actually pointing to the left side of the frame. So it goes into the black connector, which is labeled tip. The other one goes into the red connector because it is pointing to the right hand side of the frame. I always remember red for right. And then once those are in, the tip ring sleeve connector can go directly into the camera or into your audio recorder. And with that, we're ready to record some stereo audio. I'm gonna jump on that thing and go from over there to over there. See what happens. So what did I learn from all this? I learned a couple of things. One, this bike is dumping gas like crazy on the left hand side. So I need to service that carburetor as soon as I get a chance. But with regard to the microphones, I learned that because they're so sensitive, wind noise was a big problem outside. Now a few things to keep in mind. One, I wasn't using the dead cats on them. Because of the XY configuration, it'd be almost impossible to slide those on without shaving out a little bit of them. Now you could do that if you were gonna use this on a uh, boom arm or for some handheld work, it would give you the extra benefit of keeping the capsules from maybe tapping into each other as they're sitting up on top. So not necessarily a problem, but a consideration. Lastly, I had to put my preamp on one because the signal that was hitting the preamps in there were so hot. Maybe somebody out there or somebody from Movo can confirm this for me if I'm right, but I think I'm sending double the amount of signal into the camera that you normally would. Normally you would have one microphone with its output that's doing a dual mono. So same thing going to the left and right channel. In this case, it's double the amount of input, each one going to left, Got to go into right. So uh, if you know better than me, please chime in and let me know. Lastly, and to wrap this up, I thought I would do a little inside stereo test since there's no wind in here. I don't have to worry about the dead cats. So I'm going to take a stroll. I'm going to start. If I stand right here, I'm looking straight down the barrel of the left facing microphone. So I'm actually going to move what's probably just a little bit out of frame. And I'm going to start about right here. I'm not quite flush with the lens, but this should give you some idea if I go There you go. So hopefully if you did not find this educational or informative you at least found the very end of it to be slightly entertaining. I hope you liked it. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and subscribe and tell two friends and give me a comment and ring my bell and all those other things. But if you don't, that's fine too. Hang around the channel for a little while, take a look at some of my other content, and I'll try to keep, keep creating more of the same or better. That'd be even better. Better than this, not the same. Thanks for watching.